This video is produced with support from the Government of Canada's Social Development Partnerships Program Disability Component. The opinions and interpretations in this video are those of the creator and do not necessarily reflect those of the Government of Canada. Welcome to a Crash Course from Nels. This series is designed to give you the tools you need to produce accessible ebooks, making them even more enjoyable for all readers. My name is Danny. I'm an accessibility tester with the National Network for Equitable Library Service. I was born blind, so I usually read books uh, audibly or in Braille. My name is Caden Ferris. I don't have a sight impairment, uh, so I can read print just fine. It's just reading print and understanding print are two very different things. <laughs> An EPUB file is essentially an ebook in a box. So each chapter of your book is going to be set up as a separate page. And then there are a few other files that hold everything together. And then it's all wrapped into one convenient package. So ebooks are very similar to websites. They have a table of contents that takes you to different chapters in the book or different pages on the site. But unlike a website, EPUBs are really distributable. It's just a single file that contains all of these different elements, so it's really easy uh, to distribute among your network. The genesis of EPUB really occurred about 20 years ago with a standard that sought to offer a way for electronic books to be produced uh, in one standard format. And about 15 years ago, we saw the first EPUB 2 books coming out, and they were based on a standard very similar to EPUB 3. There are two versions of EPUB that are commonly in use nowadays, EPUB 2 and EPUB 3. And this was revolutionary for the electronic publishing industry, because for the first time, we had a format that was specifically designed for electronic books. And the sky was the limit at that point because anything could be added to these archives. They were so flexible and so scalable based on HTML, which made them open to anything that was added later on to, uh, to websites or to the internet in general. And it blossomed into this standard that we have nowadays for EPUB 3, which can contain uh, text, audio, pictures, uh, video, almost any conceivable format of multimedia synchronized with the text that we, uh, that we have in, in ebooks. So it offered this uh, collage of multimedia that can be synchronized with your regular book. EPUB 2 is considered a legacy format. <clears throat> it is outdated and it should not be used. And there's not really any reason to use 2.0 anymore. EPUB 2 uh, was the first major revision of the EPUB standard and it offers for uh, text to be presented in a somewhat accessible way. So it's great for what it was and it worked at the time. EPUB 2 is based on a legacy standard of HTML which means there is highly limited accessibility uh, support. It doesn't have the ability to offer the accessibility features that we enjoy even on websites today, let alone in the electronic publishing industry. So EPUB 3, because it's based on HTML5, first of all is much more scalable. It has many more options for styling text and for, for laying out books, but it also includes the wealth of accessibility that comes with today's modern websites. So uh, things like aria rolls and semantic inflection are much easier to indicate in EPUB 3 and they can be done in a standard that is understood by all of today's modern screen readers because it's the same coding that's being used for websites. So any advances that are made either on the internet or uh, the internet being used by people with disabilities immediately translates to electronic publishing when you use EPUB 3. ARIA roles are a way of identifying content in an unambiguous way to assistive technology. So we talked a little bit about uh, headings and how to make those headings uh, exposed to assistive technology so it knows, okay, this is a level 2 heading, this is, this is fairly important. There are l more ambiguous components that appear in today's publishing. 
So uh, if you have an image, there isn't really a way in EPUB 2 to indicate whether that image is important or not. In EPUB 3, we can assign an ARIA role to that image that tells assistive technology, you know what, this image is decorative, you can just ignore it, and it will. Assistive technology skips over that image when it's tagged as decorative and completely ignores it. And that is one of the really cool things about EPUB 3, and it's only available in EPUB 3. So EPUB 3 supports media overlays, so publishers who would like to offer uh, narration for their book have the ability to synchronize that narration with the text. That's really easy to do in EPUB 3. <coughs> uh, multimedia can have text or audio descriptions. Uh, it's possible to have uh, different versions of your book, uh, particularly accessible content, for instance, that can be expanded uh, in EPUB 3. There are semantics that can be attached to other elements that identify what those sections are to all e-readers. So, for instance, the table of contents or the start of reading position, different sections in the book can all be indicated with what they call EPUB type semantics and those are unique to EPUB 3. So the benefits to using a modern version of EPUB are huge for accessibility, but there are many really cool features that are available to the mainstream market that are of tremendous interest to all readers as well. Making a version 3 EPUB is as easy as making a version 2 EPUB. So as an example, if you're using InDesign and you choose to export your project to an EPUB, you can just pull down the version box and set it to version 3 instead of version 2. That's all you have to do. So it's just as easy, but it makes a huge difference for accessibility. It's very important when producing an EPUB 3 to ensure it's backward compatible. There was a lot of pushback offered a few years ago when publishers first started introducing EPUB 3. Uh, vendors or consumers would try it on their legacy device and report this doesn't work, we don't want this, go back to EPUB 2. And the reason for that is really simple. Publishers weren't offering a backwards compatible EPUB 3. It's really easy to do. E-readers are designed to ignore codes they don't understand. So the bottom line is EPUB 3s can be read by legacy readers who haven't been given the EPUB 3 semantic, except for one important difference. EPUB 3 uses a completely different navigation file than version 2 EPUBs. However, you can include both. So if when you produce your EPUB 3, you ensure you have both an EPUB 3 and an EPUB 2 navigation file, in almost all cases, your EPUB 3 is backwards compatible with legacy readers, and the pushback goes away.